We're here with John Nockhazel, uh, known by many people in the legal industry as the number one law firm COO, most organized shop, the Mike Morse Law Firm. A lot of it's been built by John Nockhazel himself uh, and his team. So I am not a lawyer, but I was brought in 15 years ago to help Mike Morse run his law firm. Spent 20 years in sales and marketing in the auto industry. I love data. That's my true passion is using data to highlight business problems and have it point the way towards where we need to go. Holding someone accountable. I think there's a lot of anxiety in business around, am I being too harsh with someone? When you hire your first employee, how intense do I need to be as a leader versus how much do I need to be humble and almost let the person learn on their own this give and take? How do you know if someone's following those processes? Ideally, it's not the entire burden of holding someone accountable isn't on the leader, but people become self-accountable. I always equate it to grades in school, so I, I never liked it when a student received a grade from a teacher. No, 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 you earned a grade. And so I try to set it up that way to where we lay out, here's the expectations, here's what doing the job well looks like, here's how you're doing, and so you're holding yourself accountable. So the first thing is, is seeing it. What gets measured gets done. If you can't measure what you're expecting to have done, if it's just a big mystery to you, then there's no way to hold somebody accountable. You have to get the person to be comfortable that they were allowed to voice a different opinion. They were heard, but they found that what your expectations are, are reasonable. And if they can get to that point, then they'll commit and once they commit, then it's no problem to hold them accountable. We are really respecting people's individual capacity much more than we ever have in the past. So one of the questions was, how many cases can your attorneys handle, Mike? It's an unanswerable question. The truth of the matter is each attorney's capacity is different from anybody else. So to treat them all identical is silly. So what you have to do is be honest about what the real capacity of each individual is, then it becomes really easy to hold people accountable. It seems like an element of more maybe flexibility in terms of not having one standard that everyone adheres to, but being more adaptable and giving more autonomy. I coached basketball for 22 years. I love basketball. Even the great players like Michael Jordan, they had to master the fundamentals once he mastered the fundamentals, he was able to layer in the creativity and the extraordinary athleticism. And so when I think about the higher level attorneys, they have to master those fundamental foundational skills and tools. Once they've got that and, and they've got it down solid, that's what allows them to be creative. I think trust is a big issue with a lot of people delegating. It's also a big issue with people micromanaging. One area I'd be interested to hear your viewpoint on, you know, I, I hear from you and a lot of other very successful people involved in, in elite law firms. They say something along the lines of we treat our team like family. Sounds good if everyone's performing. How do you deal with the hard conversations um, when someone is not performing? So I, I wanna make a couple of points. The, the first is what I lean on is my strength, which is data. So I'll have the numbers point the way and show the problem. And I'll lay out the data where they can see what I'm seeing. And the most common reaction is the person says, oh my gosh, I'm terrible. I'm a horrible human being. And I'm like, no, you're not a horrible human being. You have some really good things going on. And I find myself building them back up because they're harder on themselves than I could ever be on them. And then the, the second thing I wanna say is that it's the doing it. It's, it's not so much how you say it, it's having the courage to actually say it. So if you go and talk to someone respectfully, professionally, and you have some objective information, to guide the conversation, they'll police themselves more than you'll have to typically. Better to do it than just let it fester. The self audit I've found is very powerful, which is if you were in my shoes, what feedback would you be giving you? And usually the person is intelligent enough to know exactly what you're about to say. 
I look at it as all coaching moments. Oh yeah. These are all moments for someone to improve as a person. And if someone gets super defensive and unwilling to improve, to me, that's more of a core value issue than a performance issue. Yes, for sure. Some people feel as a manager, a sense of primary responsibility for making their team member successful. And they will stick with someone time and time and time again, and they will be misled into believing that it's their responsibility. If someone's doing a bad job, it's their fault, and they need to just keep working with the person, working with the person, and I don't subscribe to that. I think you give people a chance, you give them the tools to succeed, you give them the feedback, but ultimately it's up to them, and some people just aren't gonna make it and that's okay. Send them away and let them find something that is a better match for them in life and let them be happy instead of forcing them to be something that they're not meant to be. How do you look at your beliefs around complete and total self-acceptance around your skills, your capabilities, and how can other people gain that same level of confidence and clarity? So I'll use the basketball analogy. So I was a basketball coach as I, as I shared, and it was getting everyone to understand who they were, what they were good at, what they were great at, understand their job, and then be the best at doing that all the time and I understand what piece I am to the puzzle, and I'm happy about it, and I'm proud of it. One of my core beliefs is a mediocre plan with perfect execution nearly always beats a perfect plan with mediocre execution. So I don't think it's your dirty, smelly plans that make or break an entity, the visionary. Yep. I think the magic is the actual doing of it. It's the execution and that's what fascinates me. So I don't really care if we want to grow or shrink or stay the same. None of that's a particular concern to me. What I want to do is I want to beat the competition by out executing them. And that's what excites me because I think it's the most important differentiator is the actual doing of the things. Wow. So a powerful statement. If every business was flawlessly executing, the amount of businesses that would be wildly successful would be too many to count. Check out everything that John Knockhazel does. He doesn't go on camera a lot, but when he does, he spits out gems that can grow your business. So check out John and I'll see you in the next video. Stay great. Thanks, man. Awesome stuff.